I worked at John Foster Square. That was where the Stratcom unit was. Mm. So Veta was a division on its own. They had guys monitoring her around the clock, obviously. Mm. Her house was bugged, her post was intercepted, old news. Um, she received huge attention. She was then regarded broadly as the most dangerous woman in the country. Bunny was the populist that could get the masses raised up. She was also the key, as they saw, to getting to Nelson. His soft underbelly, if there was one. Yes, of course. Would, of course, be Winnie. So whatever intelligence they gained in, in Soweto, they would send through, of course, everything copied with Teutonic thoroughness. The head office would get a copy and I would get a copy. Some of it, if it was like a hot stuff off the press, I would actually go and meet the guy. I would then go and sit and apply this stuff. Um, when he went to a party and had too much to drink, I would elevate this when he went to a party and got so drunk she was staggering around and then I linked Zinzi, the two of them were very close at that time. I linked the two of them together, I added in Dacha smoking. I don't know to this day, and I'm, I swear to God that I'm sitting here, that when he ever smoked grass, mm. I think we might have had a more peaceful country if she had, but anyway. Um, <laughs> This is the type of stuff that we So it's where there's smoke, there's fire. You took the smoke and you just turned it into fire. Well, the perfect formula for Stratcom mm. was, was actually goes back to, and we were lectured on this, to Joseph Goebbels in, in Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany. Was uh, the perfect sort of th the perfect thing for the human brain, for a reasonably intelligent person, is 70 30. 70% 70 mm. truth and 30% is where you add your rubbish in. But this varied. Sometimes it was the other way around. 30% truth and 70%. Yeah, as long as you propaganda. could get this point mm. out. And well, if you know, the other thing was, uh, also the oldest adage of them all, if you tell the world enough bull dust, or bull, pardon my language. Long also, enough. You tell them, hammer this point down mm. over and over, they'll believe it. And the story about Winnie and, 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 and Stompy, I mean, most people, I got attacked here in George by the, this thing about um, my sight uh, when he killed Stompy. I said she didn't. Mm. I'm not Winnie's defender. There is not a shred. Look, maybe she did. Who knows? I don't know. But I can tell you one thing is that if she ever did, Soweto Security Branch or the, the detectives that investigated that would have known about it that she was involved. Because remember Jerry Richardson, who was one of our agents, incidentally admitted it in court, is the world forgotten this? He admitted it. And he actually alluded to the fact that Stompy was killed because Stompy knew that he was a security branch informer. They were scared of getting necklaced. But you say that all of the members of the Mandela yeah. Football Club, yeah. the thugs that surrounded Winnie, that they were all on the payroll of how difficult is it forces. to recruit a 14-year-old uneducated child? But they were, they, were they idealists. They were idealists. They were fighting for freedom. But he was doing it inadvertently. Eh? A black policeman goes up to him and says, listen, I'm working for MK's ultra thing or whatever. We worried about Jerry Richardson. I'm going to give you 200 rand a day. I'll meet you every night. And you tell me what's going on in Mama Winnie's house. We're protecting her. I mean, bulldust stories. God, mm. I can sit and think of a million scenarios that could have happened. There's no evidence that when he was personally, physically involved in the murder of Stompy. Mm. I mean, for God's sake, Jerry Richardson admitted in court that he killed him and gave graphic evidence. But he did say him. on Winnie's orders. Well, I don't know that. I, well, I don't know that. Does anybody know that? Well, you're in the best position because you had a house bagged. It's possible. I certainly, I certainly never received any information to that effect. Mm. Tell me, why do you think? Because you've been saying this all along. You know, it came out in the TRC hearings. Um, you've been saying all along there's no proof regarding Winnie and a lot of other things. Why do you think now that she's died? that you are so much in the limelight, that everybody wants to speak to you regarding these things. The world is now taking a, a notice of what actually happened. And you know, I think poor Winnie was just 
battered to the point eventually where there was nothing she could do about this. She was so discredited, it's unbelievable. And there's another aspect to this. I was not withdrew, but I just out of sympathy for her. I mean, she was getting heavily criticized for her association and specifically the story that I had a relation, a physical relationship with her. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, those rumors still run around George. But started, oh yeah. <laughs> Funny, eh? wonderful church people. Not one of them ever came to me and said, you know what, brother, is this true? They just condemned me.